Well, good morning to you. Uh, great to be with you again this morning as uh, we continue our little journey uh, around uh, in the Book of Acts around what is today modern day Turkey, uh, southern central Turkey in chapter 13 and 14 of Acts. This is Paul and Barnabas' first missionary journey. And so today we're in chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. Uh, great today that it's just a nice small passage. Uh, so I'm going to read the passage and, and then make a few comments. Let me read chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. This is in Iconium, uh, which today is the modern day city in Turkey of Konya, uh, which is the fourth biggest uh, city in Turkey today. So that's where that's where we are in the world uh, today. Well, at Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went, as usual, into the Jewish synagogue. There they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the other Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to perform signs and wonders. The people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, others with the apostles. There was a plot afoot among both Gentiles and Jews together with their leaders to mistreat them and stone them. But they found out about it and fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding country where they continued to preach the gospel. So as I said, this is the first missionary journey of Paul and Barnabas, which ends at uh, the end of chapter uh, 14. Uh, and what is encouraging is we, we continue to see Paul take and Barnabas take this message uh, out further and further to the ends of the earth, is that we're part of this journey today, this taking the good news of Jesus to the ends of the earth, that we're part of this mission. It's continuing today. And we uh, for those uh, listening from Norwest, we were reminded of that uh, last weekend at church as we had our church mission Sunday. Uh, and wasn't it wonderful? Uh, so encouraging to hear how our church is partnering with people, uh, gospel workers all over the world and all over our country. Uh, we heard about uh, one of our mission couples who are up in Central Asia, uh, not far from uh, where we are today, modern day Turkey, taking the gospel to unreached people groups, people who have never heard of the name of Jesus. Uh, and we're part of that as we support them at Norwest. And we also heard about um, the support that we, uh, involvement in Wickham, Northwest Australia, with Indigenous groups up there. And, and again, there are many unreached Indigenous people uh, in our own country. Uh, and what a thrill to be a part of that, of taking the good news message of Jesus to these places. And we also heard from Tendai and Mercy uh, over in Zimbabwe and uh, the work that they're doing there amongst university students. So encouraging, such a privilege for us uh, here in the Hills area of Sydney to be partnering with those around the world, taking uh, the good news message of Jesus. Well, here we are back, uh, back in the um, area of Iconium. And we see that as Paul and Barnabas arrive there, they, uh, they, they face some obstacles. Um, that begins by going very effectively in verse 1, a great number of Jews and Gentiles believe. But then there's some obstacles, as we see in verse 2, and great division is uh, stirred up. Uh, but they continue to go and, and, and make disciples. Their boldness and their perseverance is, is really encouraging in, in this part of the scriptures. Um, well, after they're chased out of Pisidian Antioch, back in chapter 13, uh, they, they shake the dust off their feet uh, in verse 51, and then they go to Iconium and they continue to preach the message of Jesus there and begin by going to the synagogue as there's normal practice, Things begin well, then there's division, but they continue to persevere. And then we see in, in verse 5, the division becomes so intense that there's a plan afoot to stone Paul and Barnabas. Uh, and stoning normally ended up in death, not always, but um, that was often the purpose as large rocks were thrown at, uh, would be thrown at them. Now, they decided in this instance that it would be wise to leave. So they left uh, this, the area of Iconium. And then they went, as we see in verse 7, they went on to, to Lystra and Derby. And what did they do? 
they continued to preach the gospel. Uh, their perseverance is just uh, such a great encouragement that they keep taking this message of Jesus out despite uh, the obstacles and the persecution they face. And what I want to just focus in on this morning in this passage is uh, that perseverance, but also the boldness of Paul and Barnabas. Uh, yes, they are apostles and they have been given special task and mission uh, by Jesus. But what's so encouraging is that they, as they're pushed out of their comfort zone, they continue to have this great boldness, take bold steps for the Lord. As we see uh, in verse 3, Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the Lord. And as I read that and think that they continued to speak boldly for the Lord under incredible persecution and opposition, I'm greatly challenged uh, and encouraged by that. Uh, their boldness here is it's not discourteous. It's it, it's not uh, in uh uh, being insensitive, it's not arrogant, it's just that they said what God had spoken to them. They weren't worried about what people were thinking, what people would think of them. Uh, they weren't embarrassed, they weren't ashamed, they weren't cowards. And what's really interesting about um, the preaching of Paul and Barnabas is they never, we're never kind of told about um, how they preach, other than that they preach with boldness. Uh, and so this idea of boldness is really important as they proclaim the message of Jesus. And as I read that, I think, oh, wouldn't it be great to be bolder uh, in sharing Jesus? Uh, I know when I've had times where I've been embarrassed uh, and kept quiet to share with Jesus, and it, it kind of hurts after you think, oh, Jesus has died for me, but I'm embarrassed or I'm ashamed to speak up for him in this situation because I'm worried what people will think that they'll think negatively, negatively of me. So I have a fear of man more than a fear of God. And I don't like that. And I'm sure when you've had those experiences, you don't like that. We want to be bold. We want to be able to speak for Jesus, just like Paul and Barnabas. And the question is, well, what's the secret? How do they have this boldness? Because I don't think it's a natural temperament. I think it's a gift from the Lord. And we see that. I think we see the secret of their boldness in verse 3. The first part of verse 3, it says, So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there, after the, the persecution, they persevered, speaking boldly for the Lord. And when it says speaking boldly for the Lord, a better translation there is speaking boldly in reliance upon the Lord. Their boldness is because they are reliant upon the Lord. So it's not from them. It is they're relying on, on, their, on the boldness because it's coming from the Lord Jesus. So that's the secret for it. If we want to be bold, we need to rely upon the Lord and he will give us that gift of boldness. Uh, and so that is really encouraging. It's, it's not about my temperament being a particular type of personality. Boldness, speaking up for Jesus is a gift from the Lord. And so it, it leads me to think, well, let's pray for that. Let's pray for that today. Let's, let's really pray that the Lord would give us boldness. And so my challenge for us today, uh, I'm going to seek to do this as well, is spend the next week just praying daily that the Lord would give me boldness, that would, the Lord would give us boldness. As wouldn't that be great to, to see ourselves growing in boldness, to see our church growing in boldness, uh, and Christians all around the world growing in boldness in speaking up for Jesus. Uh, whether it's in the school playground, whether it's in the office uh, at work, or whether with uh, a sporting field or on the sideline, wherever we are mixing with non-Christians, being bold and speaking God's word, speaking up for Jesus. Let's pray that today. And I encourage us to keep praying that this week and see how the Lord might answer us as we do that. Please join me as I pray. Father God, we, we thank you for the boldness of Paul and Barnabas that they just kept persevering, kept speaking up for you against incredible opposition. And Lord, we thank you that you can give us a greater boldness, something we long for. And Lord, we just pray that you might give each of us who are listening to this that boldness to speak up for Jesus, to tell others this good news, this message of grace, 
that uh, will save people, that will give people eternal life. It is the best news that they need to hear. So we pray, Lord, that you would give us this boldness and help us to keep pleading for it. And we look forward to seeing you answer our prayers in Jesus name. Amen. Well, thanks for listening, everyone, and uh, have a great day today.